So this video is going to be a review for these graph carving discs. They sent me two different types. Um, I do want to mention right up front that this company was extremely lenient with my timeline. They sent me these back in March and I'm just getting around to uploading the video now. The plus side of that is I've been using these since March. They're an extremely versatile tool in the shop. Um, the main purpose is to carve wood, but as you'll see in the video, I use it for many different things, especially if you're like myself and don't have a lot of fancy tools. So real quickly, this is what they sent me. Two of each, the curved disc, which is um, the one I use the most, as well as a flat disc. And these are about the equivalent of 40 grit. Now I had been using one of these cuts all discs. These things are awesome. But this is like $65 on Amazon, whereas these are about $15, I think is the price point. So if this is something you're interested in, I highly recommend getting these. They're more than capable of doing um, the jobs I asked of them, as you'll see in the video. Obviously, the $65 one is going to be a little bit nicer, but you'll see these are more than capable, and you could kind of test them out and see if you like them without breaking the bank. Um, one thing to consider is, and I've had, I have this issue with this one as well, you can see the, the marks on it from that. They don't always fit the arbor of these uh, angle grinder as well. So I actually have this washer that I hollowed out a little bit that fits on top here and then the lip of the nut fits inside of it that holds it in place. But you can see this one I've had for many 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 years that's why it looks like that. But you can see I've been using these since March compared to the originals and they're still in really good shape. So one of the first thing I use these bits for is especially um, in people that have made up furniture for other people probably know this very well is people that want newer materials to look rustic. The easiest way to do that if you're not rich because barn wood is very expensive nowadays is to be able to get a source of rough sawn lumber which is usually cheaper than finished lumber anyway and just take down the top surface with one of these bits um, if you don't finish it with the belt sander you could see at least striations in the finish which almost look like saw marks and it's a really quick easy inexpensive way to make newer materials look rustic another thing i'll use this for around the shop is any sort of um, fast removal process. I was making these doors um, a little while ago and I used bridle joints so I had to round over the corners of the inset of my doors. A quick way to do that um, without pulling out the jigsaw because I usually have this just laying around the shop with the bit in it ready to go is you just round over the corners with the the, the, the curved one and you could see that it fits in my styles and I could assemble uh, that door. So like I said, just a quick way to remove material. If you watch the channel, you might remember this project. I was making a Schatzky, and this is what these are more so intended for, is wood carving. They very, very quickly remove material. Um, they're much faster than belt sanders. That fastness usually means that you um, give up a little bit of accuracy, but I've been using these long enough, I can usually get it pretty on on mark with my line but with this bit especially with wood carving a belt sander and then an arbitral sander are usually two tools that i work in tandem with these it's similar to starting with 80 grit sand per paper and working your way up to 300 but in this circumstance it's just different tools like i said this is roughly 40 grit these discs um, so they're going to leave a pretty rough surface. So as you can see, I could feather that. I use the line and I could feather that cut all the way out. And then once that's done, I could come in with a belt sander and clean everything up. You can see how good you're getting with using these. Um, when I cut this in half, they're almost the, the exact same shape, which is more than good enough for what, what I was doing for this project. And then that is what it looks like finished and all cleaned up. So like I said, this was more so in line with, with what people intend these to use. I learned about these from an actual person who carved woods. Wood, I didn't know they existed before then, and they've just been an invaluable tool. So another project in the shop that I'm currently working on, I had to put some, some um, arches on the bottom of this piece, 
Now, what's important when using these and in, in, in things that have to be accurate, not necessarily abstract, you can see I put my pencil marks all around the entire piece, top, bottom, and both sides. So that way, as you're using this, you can work to the top, you could work to the bottom, and then you could work to the sides. It's much more accurate if you have all those pencil marks you could follow. And then, like I said here, the belt sander can come in and clean up to the line because I didn't want to get too close to the line on that. It had to be pretty accurate accurate. Um, this hasn't been on the channel yet. This is coming up. I had to make some crown and there were some coves in this so I decided to use this bit. I am well aware of the fact that you can cut coves on the table saw but first off I knew I was re reviewing this tool and it was a great use for it. And also if you don't already have a cove cutter it could be a really time consuming process to make that jig. And if you don't have the time to make the jig, it's one of those things that's very time consuming to set up to get all the math accurate um, for something that's not permanent. So I decided to use this bit. You could see I worked up to my line and I went over a little bit, but that's not that big of a deal because I made a ton of this. And instead of spending the time cutting, uh, setting this up, this took about three minutes in the shop. I could use that bit to cut that cove. If you hang around in one spot too long, you'll see it will burn. And then what I like to do is kind of eat at this material a little bit. And then you could see I use these long dragging strokes. I'm uh, touching this material very lightly because it, it removes material that quickly. These long dragging strokes and that usually leaves it pretty symmetrical. And then once again, I could come in with the belt sander with that rounded edge on the belt sander, especially it really works very well with, with the cleaning up the, the 40 grit of that disc. And then that is what that looked like. So that was obviously sped up, but it was extremely quick work to, to get all of that done. And then I can compare it to the cutout I was using to make this. And it was pretty, pretty accurate. And I can line these up to the ones I was using before. And it was just about perfect. So if you don't have the capacity to, to make a cove cutter or don't feel like making it for one project, uh, that's um, a really nice tool. And when I made that crown molding, I also knew I was going to be making curved crown. So then doing this on the table saw wasn't really going to be an option. So I kind of wanted to practice on the straight stuff first because I've never done a crown exactly like this. And it was the same process. This is going to be a multi-layered uh, crown because it's segmented, because it's an arch, so you can't just use regular crown. So I went through and I just, same thing, I had a mark. I have a high side and a low side, so a top and bottom essentially, and a middle mark, and I stick to those marks. I remove the bulk of the material, and then I could come in and clean it up with the belt sander. So this was something that, without this, obviously if you have money, you could get a molding machine and get knives and cut this, but I I didn't have one of those obviously and then that is what that crown looks like so this is done by hand so obviously it's not going to be perfect but for what I was using this for this but as long as it looked good enough to the eye it was it was good enough and that is that finished arch molding there and then just to show you what this is going to be used for you could see it layered so it was three layers in order to create uh, this crown So then the main project that I wanted to showcase is making this bowl. I started with a rough piece of lumber. This is a sweet gum. It was a, a cut off of something else I had. And I wanted to showcase how quickly these remove material. Because if you're buying these to carve wood, obviously you can see I'm using it for many things. But if you're buying it to carve wood, obviously you want it to work pretty quickly. So I have never carved a bowl before. This is not a perfect bowl. I just went through and squared up my edges, removed some of the bowl with a 45 on my uh, miter saw and then I could start carving this. So then I put a, a circle for the foot. I decided to leave the top side um, like this hexagon so I left that there and then I have two marks circles on the bottom. I made all these with a compass to kind of designate the, the lip. So I started off making the foot with uh, a hole saw and then all I'm going to do is I have a flat disc in there now. I'm just going to start removing material. I'm basically removing material in a curve from the foot down to that mark I had. 
Now you can see, obviously this is sped up, but you can see how quickly that material is removed. Up until this point, I was using this very lightly. I was, I keep referring to it as a feather touch, but from now going forward, um, I'm applying a little more pressure. And you should always use your angle grinder with the guard in place as well as the, the extension for holding it. I will admit I don't always do that. There are circumstances I take one or both of those things off, but I do want to point out that they, in order to operate these safely, that should be in there. And then I could just work my way around and start making that shape with these discs. I could change the position in the, in the, um, the vise and then work up to the line. So yes, this is a roughing uh, disc. So you're gonna have to come in and smooth this out unless the application calls for roughness. But you can see when I'm trying to get as close to that line as possible, you can also get pretty accurate with, with details of this and follow lines pretty well. At that point, um, I am once again flipped it back over and I'm just rounding over the sides in order to get the rough shape I'm looking for. This is nothing I spent too much time on. Like I said, I wanted to showcase how quickly this removed material. This was about an hour or two worth of work in the shop um, in order to get this done. And then that is what the rough out looks like. You get an ideal of the pattern that we'll leave on there. And then I could go about removing the inner uh, bit of material. So same sort of process. I'm just going through and removing the material. I wanted to go as deep as possible. In hindsight, I wish I had a bigger chunk of lumber because as you get towards the center, um, you could see I'm using this bit mostly on the top corner of it because if you hold it and, and, and hit this, this spinning disc at the wrong side is when it will catch and, and hurt you. And the problem I had was because this is, I believe, only about six inches that I'm working with here on the inner circle. As I got a little deeper, it kept wanting to catch on the sides. If you were doing, say, a 12 inch bowl, you could rough out this whole thing with, with the disc. So you can see I'm pretty deep at this point. And um, I slowed this down a little bit. You could see that it's starting to catch. Um, I was still able to get it pretty deep in there and, and hollow out the center. But like I said, if you're, you're making bowls, I would recommend something where you can easily fit that whole disc in there and then you won't have to worry about um, it being as rough as I, as I left it. But even with that little bit of problem, I easily went about two and a half inches down uh, into this bowl. So that's what that looks like. You can see I'm using uh, a marker, it's about two and a half inches and it removes that material so quickly. So obviously because of the issue of this not being wide enough, I had cleaned it up with a die grinder. Um, so that's that's what that is. But on any other uh, surface where the curve is in your favor here, I just use simple sandpaper. Um, it's 40 grit, but I have 80 grit in my orbital. It cleans it up extremely quickly. And then I just put some Osmo on, on this so that it's all done and finished. A pretty simple little project to showcase this and like I said there'll be links in the description for these if you want them I'm not making any money off of recommending these I just got the disc for free so so do not feel obligated to support the channel by buying stuff because I don't um, get uh, any sort of commission off of this but I agreed to do this tool review I'm not doing as as much anymore because like I said I really do think this is a versatile tool I don't think people know they're they're not uh, usually available in this in the hardwood stores so I don't think a lot of people know about them but they'd be a huge time saver and great if you want to get into wood carving